Okay, folks, welcome to the Week Ahead Commentary. This is Bob Desmond, and it is Saturday. Therefore, it is best stock charts for the coming week. Folks, what we're going to talk about today is, A, how was our week last week? What did we get right? What did we get wrong? Then we're going to segue over and into our watch stocks for the new trading week, and they will be Pins, Pinterest, Snapchat, Symbol SNAP, Rent a Center RCII, Zoom symbol ZM, and GD General Dynamics, a cyclical defense play. But before we begin, let's talk about our sponsor, which is Trend Spider. Don't settle for ordinary trading software, folks. It's the 21st century. You need to use 21st century charting software that allows you to automate your grunt work. With TrendSpider, you're able to customize and automate the manual technical analysis that you'd otherwise have to do by hand. I still advocate doing it by hand sometimes. This is good for those folks that are new to trading and then validating the accuracy of your trend line design by using the automated trend line features, which we'll be using today. I'm going to demonstrate it in a moment. With TrendSpider, you're able to speed up your analysis, find winning chart setups, time your trades with precision, and you also... Get a 35% discount when you use the link below, discount code CON35. You could go over to TrendSpider using the link below, take a tour. They have a seven-day free trial offer. They have scanners, charting, insights, backtesting alerts, which I use all the time. So don't wait. Jump on it. Let's get to best stock charts for the new trading week. And as a reminder, tomorrow being Sunday means that it is Sunday Night Futures Live. Join us, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. There's a link below. Enter your email address. If you're not already on one of our email lists, you'll get alerted 15 minutes to a half hour prior to us going live. So let's get to it. What do we get right? What did we get wrong last week? Well, going into the new trading week, I, m I mentioned to members that I thought that we would rally on the week. We would start the week off strong. The however was, is that given the breakout the prior week on the VIX and the bearish reversal bar, I have the Russell 2000 in front of you, the bearish reversal bar here, the probability of a sell-off late in the week was pretty good. And we even added to a short position of the Russell 2000. But what did the market tell us? This is a daily chart. What did they tell us on Friday, we were absolutely wrong. All-time highs. There was no sell-off in the back half of the week. It was a strong close. Horrible volume, but a strong close. Why am I being so honest? Why am I continuing to repeat myself as I did with members earlier on the week ahead commentary? It's because if you're not going to be honest with yourself in this business, you're going to go broke. So it's good for me to say it. It's cathartic. Now, one thing I will point out, and I pointed this out to members on the Week Ahead Commentary. Members, that's been sent out to you already. That is our analysis of the closing price action, weekly time frame of the major averages, indexes, our holdings, and the stocks that we're going to be reviewing today on Best Stock Charge. Now, I want to illustrate to you the value of using automated trend lines, because I did not pick this up. I was doing this last night. Let's go back to the daily chart for a moment. I was doing some analysis last night, and I said, what's right, what's wrong? I took a look using other charting software. I like to validate using TrendSpider. And what I saw was something that was disheartening, and that was this. When I click on trend lines here, it looks as though we're going higher on a daily time frame. And having a short position, that doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy going into the new trading week. The however was, was this. Let's take automated trend lines off. Let's go to a weekly chart. And I came to this chart here, and I said, man, damn, the weekly chart is validating the daily chart. Looks like we're going up higher until I clicked this. Weekly resistance. Look at where we peaked out on the small caps or the IWM, whatever you want to trade. It's going to be the same. IWM being a tracking ETF of the Russell 2000. You can see that we hit this upper band of resistance and 
we were slightly rebuffed. There wasn't a deep rejection, but we didn't pierce it, and we saw no volume su sufficient enough to get through that resistance. And you may be saying, you know, how the heck do we have resistance on an ETF or an index when it's at an all-time high? How do they pick this up? Easy. To show you how TrendSpider is able to pick up this resistance level, we're zoomed out here quite a bit. And you can see that the algorithms, which are picking up prior peaks going back several years, and they're extrapolating those peaks out to where we had resistance back here, back here, back here. We're probably going to see the same up here. That doesn't mean we can't head higher this coming week. This is just a warning flag. If you're looking to get long of the IWM, you may want to pause. Does this mean go short? Not necessarily. It's a strong market. So, members, more to come here. I just want to illustrate how TrendSpider is able to pick up resistance above when they, we're at all-time highs. It's pretty fantastic stuff. So now let's move on to what we got right. You'll remember this time last week, we had gone into the weekend, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, all over every financial news medium, whether it be print, whether it be televised, radio, whatever, all you heard was chatter about how Wall Street Bets was going to squeeze silver come Monday. There's only a couple of problems with that argument. One is that the silver market is far larger, far larger than GameStop, AMC, and BlackBerry combined. Also, there was very little chatter about squeezing the shorts and silver on Wall Street bets. And in fact, they were denying it, saying it was fake news. So what happened on Monday morning? Well, the shorts got squeezed. So what did we do? Well, we sure as heck didn't go buying silver. In fact, we sold our SILJ. That's our silver miner ETF. And I warned members, I said, listen, this is a complete scam. They are going to sell this thing off. This is a pump and dump, and it has nothing to do with Wall Street bets, with the exception of the fact that they were being used as the scapegoat. And the financial news media, they were more than happy to comply. Come Friday, no talk about a short squeeze. Notice how that faded away? Nobody talks about it anymore. We will here. So we did buy back in on SILJ as it pulled back to fill the gap on Tuesday, I believe. Here we go. This is a daily chart. We bought back in here. We're slightly down on it, but uh, we sold up here, bought down here again. We booked a profit, made it real, good stuff. We live to play another day. Now, take note of where SILJ found resistance. All you need to do, click a button. Bam. There was your resistance level above. Had you had this, you would have known where to bail out on SILJ. Let's move on. Okay, our first stock up is going to be PINS. These are the trades that we're looking to put on this coming week. I already went over these with members on the week ahead commentary. So members, that's been sent out to you. Now, we're going to begin with a monthly chart and do a deep dive. Monthly time frame, uh, we have a breakout in the month of February. Very nice stuff. Weekly chart. We had a beautiful flag formation set up. And last week, we broke out of this consolidation. A very, very nice week. Now, the however here is that on a daily time frame, we rallied on Friday. We faded. But with this fade and with this trade up and into the third standard deviation Bollinger Band provides us with opportunity. Let's go back to the weekly chart. What we're looking for here is for Pinterest to pull back Touch or bounce off of the breakout point. We'll keep a little bit of sensitivity. And what we'll be looking for is an entry point to buy off of support. And we'll keep this active for several days. And our alert is now set. We're ready to go into the new trading week now. And we'll wait for Pinterest to come to us. The next chart up. Snap.
Let's do the same as we did with Pinterest, monthly time frame, a beautiful continuation move higher on the month, weekly chart, very similar to Pinterest in that we consolidated for several weeks and we broke out. So as we did with Pinterest, we're going to do the same with Snapchat, touch, bounce, little sensitivity, and we're good to go, daily chart. Now, Snapchat broke out here on the second, pulled back, did a retest. On the third, another. On the fourth, and on Friday, wow. Outside reversal bar, very bullish. We may not even get this pullback because we already had it twice. So, Snap, looking more favorable to me than pins, but ultimately I think both are going up higher. RCII, this is one where we analyzed this one a while ago, and I set up a point at which we would get a breakout. Sure enough, we got it back in December. We pulled back, did a retest in January. It held ever since then, off to the races. Now, when you overlay the automated trend lines, you'll see that this month, we managed to do what we couldn't do in January. That was to hold this breakout point. Now, keep in mind, it's early in the month, so a lot can happen here. But we did get a little bit extended back in January relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band in red. And when you take a look at RCII's fundamentals, it's ranked number one in the commercial services leasing group, composite rating of 98 Accumulation distribution, meaning are the shares under accumulation or distribution? Clearly under accumulation. So Renter Center looking very good. Weekly chart. Now, let's take this off. Keep in mind what happened last week. All right, we broke out, but where were we stopped? Bring up the automated trend lines. This will keep you safe. Look at where we are relative to resistance above. Now, what I want to know is, if and when, no sensitivity here, if and when RCII breaks out. So our weekly alert is good to go. What else do we want to know? We also want to know, just in case, if we get volatility, do we get a pullback to support? Let's keep a bit more sensitivity on here. Okay, so our alert is now set. Now we set it and forget it. The software will work for us. Daily chart. A very strong day, but again, keep in mind that we do have resistance above. So let's stick with our alerts. And a look at the seasonality. There's a lot of data. Let's go back to 2000 on uh, rent -a center And February's over the past 21 years is fairly strong. Going back 14 years, drops down a bit, but still relatively strong. March is a very, very good month. So we're entering into a seasonally favorable period of time for rent -a center Just beware that in May, we drop down below 50% up going back 14 years. So rent -a center looking very strong here. The path of least resistance is clearly up. A little bit of resistance, but I think it will be overcome. The next chart up is Zoom. Weekly chart. And you can see that back in October, we had a bearish reversal bar. Then we went into a correction. We bounced in January. We broke back up above the 363 spot 41 mark. We closed there. We did a retest so far in February. Now we have rallied up to 419 spot 58, which brings us right into a resistance zone, which we are slightly above at current weekly chart. Now the weekly chart, we had broken out back here in November, the week of the 23rd, but that kind of failed. Let's get rid of this, and let's illustrate what has happened since that failed breakout. We have a new breakout. Nice consolidation here. We broke out last week. We have a volume shelf right here, and what we'll do is we'll set up, set up our alert just in case we get a pullback, keep a little bit of sensitivity, make some notes to ourselves, and we are good to go. Daily chart. Okay, so the, the daily chart is very encouraging, but there are some caveats here. What are they? Well, let's begin with the encouraging stuff. We broke through this heat map here shows where there's resistance. 
That corresponds with these volume shelves. So net net, a fairly good week last week for Zoom. The raindrop candlesticks are clearly showing a healthy validation of the candlestick chart. RSI rising, also validating. The problem that I see is this, is that we have two obstacles above. Here's one at 424.66. And in that neighborhood is this, let's take this off. Again, the value of automated trend lines. Take it off. Throw it back on. Now you know where you have resistance above. So we have two obstacles here. You want to be aware of them. And I do want to know when we break out, no sensitivity, on Zoom. And if you're wondering why I took sensitivity off, yet I still have sensitivity up there, there's a fix. Do this, and now it's gone. Go all the way to the right, then go all the way to the left, it goes away. Now, you take note of this raindrop chart here. Whenever you get a blue raindrop chart, that's a sign that you're beginning to see a change in price action. And what we've seen a couple of times, in fact, on this video so far, uh, we've seen on what appeared to be an okay day, had you overlaid your raindrop charts, you'd say, you know what, I got to keep an eye on this because the raindrop charts telling me there's indecision here. So we had a bullish setup. We were moving up higher. Then we flashed on an up day. And in a day, we attempted to break out a blue raindrop. And what happened? We pulled back. No great shock. And we've seen that on other charts here. And I'll go through them and I'll show you. And that pullback allowed some of the week longs to exit, more of a consolidation than when those weak handed investors are gone. Then you have the ability to move up and break out. And you saw a complete validation of this breakout on the raindrop chart on Friday. Now we saw the same here on Snap. We tried to break out, or we tested an upper band of resistance, I should say. Blue candlestick, we pulled back. Weak hands left. What happened? Rally. We flashed another blue doji, two down days, a retest after a breakout. Then we got a follow through. So this is a valuable tool. They just added this price compare functionality, and I've decided to go with using at current raindrop charting as an overlay. You can, you can overlay anything you want here. But this is what I've decided to go with for now. The last chart up, GD, General Dynamics, a cyclical play. You can see that we have higher lows here. We also have a breakout out of this triangle formation. We could also validate this chart by overlaying trend lines. And you can see that trend spider is picking up resistance above even though we've broken out now keeping in mind that we have resistance above i want to drill down to a weekly chart and on a weekly chart because i know we have resistance above i want to overlay on the weekly chart monthly resistance this is using multi-time frame analysis and here we go we click a button and there's that resistance level we saw on the monthly chart now on the weekly chart in dashed line so here's where i want to set my alert on a breakout above resistance and on a pullback and a retest of this breakout point, right? So why might that happen? Well, traders are OCD. They want to know what was resistance back here the week prior will now act as support. So we want to know if it touches or bounce off of support, GD, and there we have it. Our alerts are set. We're good to go here. A word of caution, going back 14 years on GD worth of seasonality, we probably have more, but this is sufficient. We're up 60% of the times in February. That's working out well. Beware, March is seasonally a weak period of time. So this will probably be just a short-term swing trade. Daily chart. Now, what we have also on this chart are heat maps in red. Take them off or put them on. And what they represent is support and or resistance. And you could see over the course of the past couple of months, general dynamics has overcome a heck of a lot of resistance. And last 
Thursday was a very bullish breakout. Yes, we had a continuation move higher on Friday. I'd rather wait rather than chase for a retest. I think it's fairly safe to bet that that's going to happen. And take note of, again here, folks. Take note that back on December the 23rd, just as I showed you with uh, Snap, I believe it was Zoom, that we flashed a blue raindrop on a day where we were up. But on that day, we tried to break out above resistance, but we were rejected. It's not your typical doji star formation. It's not even a doji star formation. But the raindrops picked it up as an indecision bar. And just as I showed you with Zoom and Snap, typically you'll get a pullback after a failed breakout. And sure enough, we pulled back. And that set the stage for a move higher because weekends were shaken out. Take note of where we bounced, though. Take off the automated trend lines, put them back on. We bounced right off of the automated trend lines. A lot of value here with Trend Spider, folks. So please, if you don't have it, you're fighting a battle with an arrow missing from your quiver. So please take advantage of that 35% discount code using the link below. Folks, tomorrow night... On YouTube, we will be going live. Sunday Night Futures Live, please join us there. If you're not currently a member to The Contrarian Trader, please take advantage of our special offer below. If you want Trend Spider, go over to the website using the link below. Sign up for silver or gold, and you get Trend Spider included with your membership. And yes, if we trade any of these symbols we've discussed... We will send out alerts to members when we enter, add, and exit. I hope to chat with everybody tomorrow night. Until then, everybody have a really great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well.